Hello, today's video is all about chord progressions and how we can use different techniques and approaches to elevate them, keep them fresh and sounding, well, really cool. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about my favorite chord progression, which is A minor, G, F, and E7. We'll change the chord voicings a bit. Maybe add some flamenco strumming. So if you feel like your same old chord progressions and same old strumming patterns are starting to get stale, then this video should help give you some new tools to make your patterns sound great while learning my favorite strum pattern, my favorite chord progression, favorite picking, all these cool things along the way. So let's go ahead and start with the chord progression. Now I mentioned before it's A minor, G, F, and E7, and that's going to look something like this. To play the A minor chord, we just take our middle finger, place it here on the second fret of the G string. To play the G chord, index finger here on the second fret of the C, middle finger here on the second fret of the A, ring finger here on the third fret of the E, F, middle finger here on the second fret of the G, index here on the first fret of the E, and E7. To do this, take that index finger, move it up to one on the G, middle finger here on two of the C, and ring finger here on two of the A. So a pretty basic chord progression. And to go with this basic chord progression, we're also going to do a basic rhythm. You've probably heard this rhythm before. It's your down, down, up, up, down, up pattern, which sounds something like this with the A minor chord. Now, if you struggle with this rhythm, like I did when I was actually first starting playing, it's probably because you're not keeping a good pulse with your hand. So a quick tip if you struggle with this rhythm or struggle with rhythms in general, is to make sure that your hand is always moving down and up. Because it's not actually down, down, up, because it's not possible to go down and then down again. It actually looks something like this, using these little dotted arrows to represent missing the strings. So in this case, I'm going to go down and then bring my hand up, missing the strings, just not striking them. And then I'm going to go down, up, and then just like I missed on that up strum earlier, here I'm going to miss on the down strum. And this is really hard to do because we like doing down strums. By, by missing here, it gives us the opportunity to then come up again and down and up. So it really looks something like this. Down, miss, down, up, miss, up, down, up. Go ahead and try it with me. Down, miss, down, up, miss, up, down, up. It's kind of a tricky pattern despite being the most used, but there you go. There's the basic chords, a basic strum pattern, how most people would probably play it, right? The reason I love this chord progression so much is it's used in songs like Body Surfing, which you can find a tutorial of over there if you want. It's a really common one on the ukulele and in that kind of flamenco sounding music. But the problem is with these chords is for the most part, they double up on notes too much on the ukulele. So what I mean by this is when we play our A minor, we have two A notes, our G string and our A string. And if you're playing a high G ukulele like I am, those A notes are the same pitch even. That's not a good thing. We go to the G chord, my G string and my E string, both G notes. Again, not so good. Go to the F chord, my G and A strings are both A notes again, just like the A minor chord. And then the E7, none of the notes are different, but when you listen to E7, it sounds most interesting of all those, right? Well, let's make those first three chords much more interesting by doing my favorite technique for chords, which is just adding the nine. Now, nine is just a big fancy word for two. If you think about it, scales have seven unique notes, right? In the case of what we're playing in here, the key of A minor, no sharps or flats. We have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? Just going through the alphabet, no problem there. So G is the seven, which means Eight is the A and nine is the B again. Nine and two are basically, for most intents, the same thing. 
for functionally the same. So what we're going to do is add the nine to the chord. So the nine of the A minor chord, well, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, is going to be adding a B note. To do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play my A minor, and then I'm gonna take my middle finger here and place it on the second fret of the A string. That's going to give me that nine that I'm looking for. When you listen to this, isn't that a cool sound? Love that sound. As we go in the next chord, the G chord, we're going to again add the nine again. So let's count. G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. Okay, we're at A, the same as the two, G, A. So I'm going to add an A note. The easiest place to add an A note is to make my middle finger come off so I play my open A string. But there's a problem with this. The problem is I still have these two G notes. And now I no longer have this B note that was there. So I'm going to flip my fingers around and put that B note up here on the four of the G. Now, if I'm losing you with these note names, don't worry about it. It's totally fine. Just try playing this chord, four, two, three, zero, and listen to it. Isn't that a great sound? Sounds great with low G and high G. Just love these chords. And there is your G add nine. It makes it so that all the strings are playing different notes. Next up, we have our F chord. This is my favorite chord on the ukulele, F add nine. So what we're going to do is add the nine, which is the same as the two, so F, G. I'm gonna add a G note. I'm gonna take my middle finger off, play the G string, and guess what? That's all I'm gonna do, because this note was an A. It's already doubled, so now it's not, and it just sounds awesome. So there's my F add nine. So just with these adds, Sounds pretty good, right? But let's add one more chord in there. Let's add the E7 sharp five. So what that means is I'm gonna play my E7 chord right here. And I'm going to sharp the five. Now we wanna take this as literally as possible. The five of E is going to be E, F, G, A, B. It's a B. So I find my B and I sharp it, which means plus one fret. Now that is a C note, or you could call it a B sharp. The name doesn't matter, all that we know is Hey, that sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? Spicy. So with these four chords now, we can really make it sound a lot richer. And if I take my same down, miss, down, up, miss, up, down, up pattern I did a moment ago and apply it with these chords, it'll sound something like this. Now, to play along with me there, it might feel a little bit difficult because you may have never played these chords before, and that's okay. Just practice getting comfortable with those fingers. And what you can do, we'll play it again together here, is don't worry about the strum pattern right now. Maybe just try to play the chords in time. Try to play each of these. They are tricky, and if you mess up, it's totally fine. Just try strumming through the chord each time as it goes through. Let's go ahead and give it a go, all right? So it should be something like this. Two, three, four. One more. So when we're playing this, it's really important to get comfortable going through these different pieces and really, you know, feeling these chords and these new voicings because man, do they sound cool, right? They're so much fun to play. But that's not enough, right? That's only the, the second layer now. We've changed the chords. We've taken my basic chord progression, and now we've changed the chords. Let's go ahead and change the rhythm too. With this, we're going to introduce what's called a flamenco rumba strum. Now, I actually did a full tutorial for this, and it's available right here at this link. So if you have not checked out this video, I highly recommend checking it out before moving on, just so you can get comfortable with the techniques that are utilized in this, because this strum sounds so cool. But what it looks like in tab form, it looks something like this, and it's very different than the way that it looks when it's written out in the strumming form like it's shown in the video. Both are correct ways of looking at it, and it can be helpful to learn both ways as you're on your journey trying to figure out how to get all these drums comfortable. But what this ends up sounding like, just with our first chord, the A minor add nine, is something like this. 
So what I'm doing here is I'm doing that down and then I'm doing a sweep, which is using multiple fingers to come out across the strings. And then I'm going to come up, followed by a chunk. And then I'm going to come up, down, and up. So it's introducing the sweep or raschiato technique and the chunk to the pattern. But otherwise, it's for most purposes the same type of strum pattern. If you listen to this, down, 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 up, down, down, this, down, this, up, down, and you listen to this, you hear they have the same rhythm to them, don't they? They've got the same sort of vibe, and that's what makes this so cool. They can work together. If this strum pattern is too difficult for you, you can work on the earlier pattern, or maybe you want to teach somebody else to play along with you on a chord progression like this. They can go hand in hand. And the reason for that is because, for the most part, they have the same sort of hits. What this means is when we're doing a strum pattern, certain strums should be played a little bit louder than others. The reason why our down, down, up, up, down, up pattern is so common and and practical and useful is because it uses a little bit of what's called syncopation. That syncopation is an accent on an offbeat. And all that an accent on an offbeat is, is an upstrum in the case of strumming. So we wanna make sure that we get comfortable with those accents on the offbeat. And one of the best ways to do that is with our sweep followed by an up. It sounds really good to have that sweep followed by an up, really pronounced. And then we're going to do that chunk and then up, down. You hear that up strum just creates this nice sound. Same sort of thing in our down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down. So it creates a very similar rhythmic identity, which is what we're looking for in this new pattern. So let's go ahead and hear what this pattern sounds like with these cool new chords. And go ahead and try playing along if you'd like. You can play just the chords, you can play just the pattern, or you can just listen along for a couple measures. But it should sound something like this going through. Two, three, four. Pretty nice, right? It's amazing how much depth that creates by just introducing some chunking and sweeps along with those chords for that third layer using the flamenco rumba strum. Now that's great and all, but we want to add even more layers. And one of the best ways to do that is to introduce another technique. In this case, we're going to be using four finger picking to create the same sort of rhythm that we used here with the flamenco rumba strum and our down, down, up, up, down, up strum but now in more of a finger style kind of way. This is almost Travis Picking-esque when you look at it, and it really relies on that four finger picking concept. So if you haven't done four finger picking before, check out the link down below. I've got a tutorial that talks about four finger picking, but the real quick gist of it is that you wanna station your thumb on your G string, your index on your C, middle on your E, and ring here on your A. And you wanna make sure that your thumb is in front of the other fingers and that your other fingers are close to perpendicular. As you pluck the strings, you wanna make sure that your fingers have a little bit of a recess in this first knuckle joint. So as they pluck, they come both up and out. And you'll notice they kind of go underneath the thumb as they do that. If you've never done this technique before, it's tricky and it takes a while to get comfortable with. But again, there's videos down below that you can watch to get more comfortable with it. If you really like three finger picking, you can pull it off for this, although I recommend the four finger just to build speed and efficiency with this. But what we're going to play is a pattern that looks something like this. Now this pattern looks weird, right? It's a grid with X's in it. Well, let's start with just our A minor add nine, the two zero zero two chord that we were playing before. And let's go ahead and follow what this grid says. So it says X's on the G, C, E, and A for the first thing. What that means is that you're going to pluck your C, E, and A strings because those are the ones with the X in it. Notice how the G is open. There's no X in the G, so I'm not going to play it. After I've plucked my C, E, and A, I'm then going to pluck my G because now that's where the X is. And then the C, and then the E and the A, and then the G, and then the C and then the E and the A, and then the G. So you'll notice that we're just following the grid that's shown here on the screen, plucking along, because this is kind of like a 
Well, it's a finger picking pattern. We've got strumming patterns. Why shouldn't we have finger picking patterns too? And it sounds something like this when you play it. Again, just with that A minor add nine. If you like how this is written out, I did a finger picking workshop that really dives into this, but this isn't the only way it can be shown. I can also show it as tab, which if you'd like to download the tab, be sure to check out my Patreon page linked below, but the tab looks something like this. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pluck just what's kind of shown on screen. So I'll start with my A minor add nine. And then I'll go to my G add nine. my F add nine, my E seven sharp five. And I'll repeat it. And I'll speed up a little bit. A little bit more. Cool. It uses the same sort of syncopation that our other patterns had. It's really that going that and of two is what's happening. And we see the same sort of thing, one and two and. It's that sound right there. That's the same as and the. They all use that same sort of vibe to create that really nice, rich sound that really leans its well into that, you know, <laughs> leans itself well into that flamenco style sound, right? But this is another element we can add. And what's cool is if you're playing a song with a chord progression that goes through the whole tune, why not finger pick it, go into strumming, go back into finger picking, it creates depth and variation. It sounds really nice, right? So let's go ahead and try this together. This is a monster, right? Finger picking with this. If you haven't done four finger picking, this is very difficult and that's okay. But it should sound something like this just so that you can kind of hear it more in time. Something like two, three, four. Now that's full speed. That's not very approachable when you're first learning it. But what's cool is that is just the same thing as this, just sped up. Now it might be very slow right now, but I'm developing that muscle memory. I recommend you do the same. Practice it nice and slow so that you can then speed it up. But there you have it. There's some finger picking that's now being used to create this sound, right? And honestly, just this is a lot to start to take into your chord progressions that you might have that you're finding a bit stale, right? Change the chords to different voicings. I recommend adding the nine, it almost always works. And in addition to doing that, you can change the strum pattern, use some chunking, use some flamenco techniques in this case. There are other examples of that that we can use too. And then maybe finger pick instead of strumming, finger picks and create a pattern using that grid system to create a different sound. But that's not where we're ending it because I play primarily chord melody style. And what that means is that I like to play a melody and the chords together. So I figured I'd make up a little melody to go with this that utilizes all of these different techniques that we've been working on. And this is going to look something like this. And to play this, what we're going to do is we're gonna start with strumming. We're gonna do a down strum on the A minor. Then we're going to do our Roschiato technique. Then come up and we're going to add two on the A string. And we're gonna add three on the A string with our ring finger. And then we're going to come up, opening the A string. Then back on two, then up on three. So that first measure looks like this. And you can hear this little melody coming through. And that's because our A string is playing it, which is our highest pitch. Going into the 18, I'm going to do a down strum on a G chord. And you'll notice I didn't write the down on the G string. If you accidentally hit that G string, it's totally fine. We're just more trying to prioritize the lower strings. 
And then I'm going to, from that down strum, go into finger picking. So right after I do the down, I'm gonna bring my hand into that four finger picking style. And then I'm gonna pluck my G, C, and then my E and A together, but I'm going to take my middle finger off here. So it's open on the A string, which adds the nine, funny enough. And then I'm gonna pluck the G, C, E. So that measure 18 looks like this. And the two together, almost sounds like a, um, almost like classical gas, right? If you don't know that tune, check that out. But we're combining that strumming and that picking together to create this sound. As we go on to measure 19, we're gonna do the exact same thing we did with 17, with the A minor chord, but now with this F add nine, doing exactly the same thing. Where we're adding that two and three on the A string. And then on measure 20, we're going to do another down, this case on the E7 sharp five. And then we're going to do our plucking of the G, C, and then the E and A, but that ring finger is going to move down to two. G, C, and then E and A with the ring finger coming off. So 20 is the sort of... And 19 and 20 sound kind of like... And the whole thing sounds like... Cool, right? Really rich, open sound. And what's fun about it is all that I'm doing is playing with a couple notes. I'm just adding this sort of, this A, B, and C to the chords, right? There's not a lot to it. And, you know, I could talk about the music theory behind this and how I'm using passing tones and chord tones and all of that, but we don't have enough time in this video to cover all of that. So how you can create your own melodies with chord progressions is look at the notes that are played in the chords and move between them. In this case, this A minor chord has this A note in it, right? The G chord has this B note in it. And then that E7 sharp five that we played, has this C, this three on the A, right? Now I know the C note's also in an A minor chord, right? But it's pretty cool because I'm just using this A, this B, and this C to create a little melody and move in the chords with it. I'm not going to worry about if the note is always part of the chord, I'm just gonna kind of move between them and that's kind of how I created this. So that sound of is just moving with those three notes. So you can try that on your own with your own chord progressions by just looking at what are the notes of the chord and how can I maybe merge them a bit and work between them. And oftentimes you can create some really rich sounding melodies just playing the notes of chords when they're not necessarily supposed to be played. Sort of like when I play that B note on the F chord. It's not part of it, but it sounds pretty good as I work it through and create that sort of melody sequence. All right. And so now we've taken my favorite chord progression, which is A minor, G, F, E7, which is the same chord progression for songs like Body Surfing on the ukulele, really cool flamenco sounding stuff, right? And then we changed the chords. We added the nines to them and made the, the final chord a sharp five. Really interesting sounds. Remember, you can always add nines to chords just about, and it sounds awesome. So give that a go with your favorites. And then we changed the rhythm a little bit by adding the flamenco rumba strum. It still kept the same bones of that da, 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 da type of rhythm, but now just adding in that, that rosciato technique as well as that chunk. And then we looked at finger picking and kept that same rhythmic integrity, but used four finger picking and created a picking pattern that sounds a lot like that. And then the fifth and final layer is we, well, took all the pieces and rolled them together and added a melody to it so that you could hear how all of these different techniques go together. And what's fun is if you listen to me play our first starting point, which was this right here, right? Of our... And then you listen to adding the melody.
creates just so much depth being able to play between these different parts and creating these different sounds. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I know this is a pretty long video. If you've made it all the way through, awesome. I hope that there are pieces of this you can take to your chord progressions and your arrangements to make them a little bit more spicy, just a little bit more fun. And you know, if you find something that works really well for you, be sure to leave it down in the comments below or shoot me a message over at my Patreon page. Every month we do a different tutorial vote based on the suggestions from my patrons. And this is what won this month's tutorial vote. So for all my patrons, thank you so much for the support. Thank you for voting on this awesome idea and stay tuned on that page for all tutorials that I create here on YouTube. Everything's available there, just like the tab to this. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. I hope you can take these pieces and apply them to your chord progressions. I'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you so much.